Oh, okay. Is that my cue? Everybody shut up. <clears throat> By now, I'm sure you've heard, uh, David Letterman is retiring, and Stephen Colbert is taking over as David Letterman on Late Night with David Letterman with Stephen Colbert, which I'm sure it will be called in the future. Um, I have composed, in homage to David Letterman, a top three list of reasons why Colbert should stay where he is. Number three, lack of sarcasm. Colbert has provided almost all of the sarcasm on network television for way too long. And w we lose him, we lose that stable base of sarcasm. I mean, who do we have now? We have uh, Jon Stewart, his best friend, I assume, and closest... Uh, closest competitor in that field. We, him in The Daily Show, he plays it straight. Jay Leno plays it straight. Jimmy Fallon plays it straight. Everyone gives you uh, their thoughts and opinions completely unfiltered by uh, conservative guys. Uh, the thing that makes Colbert so great is that he, spend, or he spent all of these years um, in character in the character of a, uh, a faux conservative, someone who is saying things that he doesn't mean with the intent of uh, kind of flipping their ideology on themselves. Um, two, the Better Know Districts. I've spent so long following Stephen Colbert's crusade across America, trying to interview every single one. It's like Pokemon in a sense. You gotta catch them all. You gotta get them all, and you gotta interview them. And now, he's only gotten, or as of this recording, he's only gotten to 76 districts out of the 434 that he has set out to, to, to interview. And I don't think it is fair to the viewers of the show or to Stephen Colbert himself if he quits before he has interviewed all 434 districts. And number one, 2016. 2016 is right around the corner as we record this in 2014, and the Republicans are a little confused right now. I mean, their front runner for the longest has been Chris Christie, but after Bridgegate, Bridgegate, I don't think uh, I don't think he has what it takes to be president. Who's going to run on the Republican ticket? Rand Paul, Sarah Palin? No, Stephen Colbert. He was the only one. If he ran for president in 2016, the chances of him winning would probably be as good as if he had run in 2012, uh, which may or may not have been zero, but that's not the point. The point is that on uh, the David Letterman show, which would now be the Stephen Colbert show, uh, he can't, he doesn't have the amount of freedom, of political freedom that he had when he was on the Colbert Report because it is not a political show. It's just a normal everyday talk show. He's going to interview Brad Pitt and Selena Gomez and all that jazz. I don't want him to interview Selena Gomez. I want him to interview people that matter and he won't be able to do that. It'll be like a morning show like Good Morning America, all about what the consumer wants instead of what he wants. Even if he has complete creative freedom, he has to confine to the structure of the show. And the structure of this show, on top of being an hour long instead of 30 minutes, is much different than the structure of The Colbert Report, which is only 30 minutes and completely politically based. It's a, it's a show about politics. It's a show about satire. It's a show about sarcasm. He strips all of that out of his show and then make two of them, you get what he's going to do on CBS, which is a talk show, a late night talk show, even though most of it is not, you know, uh, interviews. Most of it is just, you know, you start with a monologue, you end up interviewing a celebrity or someone that the people would want to watch instead of someone who's uh, making a difference, you know, like an author or a teacher or whoever is... Uh, Whoever's, whoever's making a difference, uh, you lose that when you, when you go to a late night talk show.